Hey guys, so we're going to go ahead and continue chain rule day three. So, here we have an example. Uh, it says here that use the graphs of F and G to find the following if they exist. H is defined to be as F times G. So, they want us to find F prime of H prime of 1. So, let's find H prime h prime is the first term times the derivative of the second function so not term functions plus the second function times the derivative of the first function and then they want us to find it at one f of one times g prime of one plus g of one times f prime of one so let's figure out what are these values so here's one f of 1 is here and that also looks like to be g of 1 so f of 1 is equal to g of 1 since they both intersect the same area and that is 3 so I'm gonna say this is 3 plus 3 now let's find the other two parts f prime of 1 g prime of 1 well this is g prime of 1 right here and that is a slope of negative 1 and f prime of 1 is slope of what 2 yeah it's 2 so it's gonna be negative 1 2 which is negative 3 plus 6 is equal to 3 there is my derivative. Okay, so I think we already done B before. I think these problems are very familiar. Let's go ahead and go down to C. Okay, I think A and B were from the other lesson, I'm pretty sure. Okay, if not, you can challenge yourself on doing C. I'm um, sorry, letter B. So let's do P. P says find P prime of 6. Okay, so P prime, well, what's the derivative of p prime it's going to be f prime g of x times g prime of x so that means that p prime of 6 is f prime of 6 no f prime of g of 6 that equals times g of prime of 6 okay very very careful let's pay attention over here so we're concentrating at 6. So let's go to 6. Let me erase all this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is f of 6, which is 2. g of 6, which is 4. f prime, g prime of 6, of 6. So let's see what these are. So g prime of 6 is this slope which is negative 2 no that's f I'm sorry that's no that is g negative 2 f prime is this slope which is a negative 1 half so let's go ahead and use these let me copy and paste these right there okay so I need to first figure out what is my g of 6 g of 6 is 4 so it's going to be f prime of 4 times g prime of 6 which is negative 2 now be very careful this is not 1 half because this is f prime of 6 now we need to go up to the graph and find f prime of 4 1 2 3 4 and that looks like that line up there let me use another color this line that line looks like to be a rise of 2, run of 3, so it's 2 thirds. 2 thirds times negative 2, which is negative 4 over 3. Now let's do the other one, letter D. Letter D says t of x is gf of x. Find t prime of 7. Okay, so t prime of 7. I'm going to go ahead and just jump into it because we know what the chain rule is. It's the outside derivative keeping the inside except now I have a 7 
times the insight, which is f prime, and now of 7. Okay, so here's what we need to find out. We need to know what f prime of 7 is, and we need to know what f of 7 is. Now, we don't know what g of something is, g prime of f of 7 is, until we find out what f of 7 is then we'll know what g prime of whatever that number is. So we have f prime of 7 and f of 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. f of 7 is, let me see, g of 7 is 0. f of 7 is, looks like it's 1, 2, 3 and a half, so I'm going to say 3.5. And then we also need to know what f prime of 7 is. f prime of 7. Well, this is the same line, which is negative 1 half. So let's go back down over here. Let me copy and paste this. I'm going to put it down here. OK. f prime of 7 is negative 1 half. f of 7 is 3.5. Okay, which means that which means that g of f of seven, which is three point five, times f prime of seven, which is negative one half. Now I need to figure out what the heck is g prime of three point five. So it's g prime of three point five. We don't know what that is. Let me go up and figure it out. One, two, three and a half. Well, that looks like the same line segment that we had seen before. That line segment has a rise of 2 thirds. So it's 2 thirds. So this is going to be 2 thirds times negative 1 half. Once twos cancel, which is negative 1 third. And that is my derivative. OK, guys, well, this concludes all the derivative rules that you need to know. Every single rule for derivatives, you guys know, with the exception of a couple more, which we won't get into until later on in the curriculum. But for right now, you guys are more than capable of finding derivatives of all kinds of functions. You guys have, you guys have the rules. Okay. In the next unit, we're going to be talking about implicit differentiation and related rates. So from now on, we're going to be talking about how calculus is actually used on the outside world.